at the end of the last class, I mentioned this course program that I had written to try to use multiple cores and left it as a challenge to do one that actually works better. And I didn't walk through my code, so I'm going to do that. And then Lauren's going to show us a much better way of doing it. But this was the code I had, which actually runs much slower than the single-threaded original coats code. But it is using multiple cores. So here's what we're doing. Creating a vector of ports, and we're going through, so I set seven as the maximum number of tasks. Probably not a great choice, but not a horrible one. So I have eight cores. Why did I pick seven instead of eight? Yes. Yeah, so there's at least the original task that's still running, that's spawning all of these. Now, that doesn't mean that I should really only, only use seven, right? Because even the core that was running the original task is waiting to do I.O. most of the time, so it could be running something else. So not a great choice, but not a horrible one. And then I'm going through this loop. For each task, I'm creating a new channel. I'm keeping track of the port. And then I'm spawning a process that calls Colette steps for that val. So I'm calling it for each of the values from n plus 0 up to n plus max tax, tasks and seeing what the result is. So I, the new spawn process is calling Colette steps, and then it's sending that over the channel. So now I've created all these channels. They're all sending. So I need to have something else listening for those channels. I have another loop that is popping the channels off the vector receiving and checking if we found one better. And at the end of all that, if we didn't find one better, I am increasing. So this, uh, my indentation's a little off here. This ends the four, this first four, and this ends the last one. I'm advancing n by the number of tasks that I tried. Does this at least produce the correct result? So what are the things we should be worried about going wrong here? I remember our goal is to get the number, the lowest number that has at least that number of at least k steps in the colat sequence to get down to one. Does this guarantee that we always get the lowest one, or are we going to get the one that happens to finish first? What order am I doing the receives in? So I'm spawning these tasks, right? So I'm going through, let's say, I'm starting at zero. So I'm calling colat steps. Going through this loop, calling Colette steps for all the different values, each one of those in a separate task. And when it gets to the end, it is doing a send. So do we know the order those sends will happen? OK, good. So you're, you're answering the earlier question. You're on my stack. You popped up the stack of questions to answer the, the first one, which is good. Right, so the answer to this one would be no, but the answer to the one you're answering is yes, and you're answering it correctly. Right, so we don't know which order the sends happen. Right? There's no guarantee that the task that we spawn first is going to do the send first. But as you were explaining, there is a guarantee that we receive on the port that the send was sent to. Right? So the way this loop is working, we're popping. So we're getting these ports in the opposite order of the way they were created. Because here we pushed, here we're popping. So that means as we go through this loop, we're getting the last one that was started first. That's the first one we're going to pop off. And it's going to wait until that one sends, until it receives. And so we're going to get the last one last, which means if the last one produced a, better, a result that was greater than k, that's going to be our result. Except I think, yeah, we do actually. Uh, are we calculating the result number correctly? I think we're not. This should be counting. Uh, yeah, this should be counting down. This should be n plus max minus i. So it's actually not correct, but it's at least deterministically incorrect, which is better than being correct some of the time, I think. So how well, assuming we fix that bug, how, how well is this using our cores? Do we expect this is going to be getting a eight times or seven times speed up that we're hoping for? What don't we like about this? Let's see, first thing, so when we spawn one of these processes, what happens to that task after it finishes? Is that core doing anything after that? Yeah. So that core is waiting, doing nothing useful, until we've gone through this entire thing, 
and then back in the loop again and restarted. It. So it's sitting idle all the time while the other tasks are waiting to finish. And that's going to be a pretty significant amount of time because, well, first of all, we're waiting to receive the last one first. And that's the one with the highest number, so not guaranteed to take longer, right? The way call outs work, there's, there's no systematic ordering of it, but it might take longer. And it's the last one that started. So we're waiting a long time, sitting things idle. Well, even if we got, you know, at the best point of this, seven cores busy doing useful work, the vast majority of the time, most of them are not. Right? And remember, the time it takes to finish this varies a lot depending on the input. So this sort of takes advantage of having more cores, but is a pretty dumb way of doing things. So Lauren is going to tell us a much better way. <laughs>